Right, it's Mr. Palmer again. Uh, hopefully, third time lucky with this one. I won't like cough or sneeze my way through it. Uh, so, before you go through this video, uh, make sure you go over your notes on boundary numbers, two's complement, boundary addition, and subtraction. Uh, this one's about floating point numbers and looking at how a real number is stored and normalized, and what is the effect of normalization on the accuracy of a floating point number. Okay, so the magnitude of the number that can be stored, um, in addition to uh, the effect on storing zero. So if I want to store a 16-bit decimal number, I'm going to cut my binary word in half. Okay. Uh, the left-hand side you can see is an increasing magnitude, and the right-hand side is in de uh, decreasing magnitude in terms of the fraction. Okay. So if I want to store 5.75, on the left-hand side it's going to be one, zero, one, and the rest are all zeros, and on the fraction side a half and a quarter, and the rest are all zeros. So before we continue, some quick maths lingo. If I want to store 5.75, I can write that as 0 0.575 times 10 to the 1. Okay, I've normalized the number. Standard form or something like that, I think they call it. Okay, that's the mantissa. That number up there is the exponent. So if I want to normalize a floating point number, I can write it in the same kind of form. I can write that 5.75 in binary as 10.111 times 2 to the 1. 1.0111 times 2 to the 1 0 or 0 0.10111 times 2 to the 1 1 it's 2 to the 3 okay obviously you have a positive um exponent then uh, the decimal place is going to shift to the right and if i have a negative exponent it slides to the left if i want to normalize a decimal number basically sorry so i'm normalizing yeah that floating point number i'm going to write it in this form Okay, so any of the three previous ones obviously are valid, but if we all follow the same rules, then it uh, standardizes uh, it for everybody, it makes everyone's life easier. Okay, the convention to look out for is that the first two numbers have to be different. Okay, so it would be a one and a zero, a zero and a one. All right, it cannot be one, one. So that has an implication for when you're storing a two's complement number and you have the minus 128 and the 64 active. Okay, that means you need to normalize it by shifting a further uh, placeholder to the right. So, how am I going to store that number? Notice I got an error there on a uh, the slide, it should be times 2 to the 1, 1. Okay, I'm going to get the mantissa, I'm going to get the exponent, and I basically store them in uh, my, uh, my binary word. Okay, and if you want to look at it, there it is uh, with the placeholders. Okay, the uh, one, the whole number one, the most significant bit on the left hand side, uh, obviously in two's complement, that would represent the minus 128. Okay, when uh, we've expanded the number. And in terms of the, uh, the exponent, you can see that uh, it's a two's complement form. So that allows you to store, uh, allows you to move the decimal point towards the left and towards the right, depending on whether you're storing fractions, you know. A zero point something. So, uh, what is the largest possible number that can be stored? Well, if I have my um, normal uh, sixteen bit word and I've got eight bits for the exponent and eight bits for the mantissa, I can have a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus this one over sixteen, one over thirty two, one over sixty four plus one over one twenty eight times two to the seven. That's 127 over 128 times 127, which is 126.078125. Quite important, all right? Pay attention to the numbers and see what happens. Let's just quickly look at the smallest negative number that can be stored. All right, it will be 1.0 times 2 to the 127, okay? Because all of the uh, other bits will be active. Remember that uh, 1.0 will become a minus uh, number uh, negative uh, in two's complement, all right? So it's quite a, a small negative number, very far away from zero. Now, what happens if we increase the exponent? All right, you can see that now instead of having eight bits for the mantissa and eight bits for the exponent, I've shifted it along. I've only got six bits for the mantissa. Well, that means that I have a larger exponent, so I can shift it further along. So two times two to the ten, all right? That's going to give me. 495.03125 look what's happened to the to the fraction part less accuracy so i have a larger number 
but less accuracy. Again, if I move the uh, exponent along one more uh, uh, further, and you can see 7 over 8 times 2 over 4, 8, 1, 7, 9, 2. Okay, so I can store again a much larger number, but the accuracy again is being reduced each time. All right, so something to think about that um, with the, the floating point numbers, they, you have to have a, that trade off between storing a large number, okay, and the accuracy of the number that you store. Now, what about storing zero? What we want to do is we want to put 0, 0.0 times 2 to the minus 128, isn't it? Okay, but remember the convention, all right, we can't do that. You can't have two numbers that are the same. It has to be 0 0.1 times 2 to the 100 minus 128. Okay, so that means that the smallest positive number that can be stored is going to be um, slightly above 0. And now if you work out the same for the smallest possible, uh, sorry, the largest possible negative number, so that's the number, negative number that's closest to zero. Yeah, you will see that it is just below zero again. All right. So uh, that means that you can't actually store zero in a decimal number. Yeah. So the trade off there is that computers basically use a number closest to zero as zero. All right. You may have noticed uh, when you're doing floating point calculations in a program and you're expecting the answer to be zero and it gives you a random decimal number. Okay that's why right so you should be able to answer now how a real number stored and normalized okay think about the convention there where the first two numbers are different okay it has to be a one and a zero or a zero and a one times two to the power of okay and then you should be able to explain the effect of normalization on the accuracy so the magnitude of the number that can be stored and the accuracy in terms of the fraction part um, and the effect of uh, when storing zero. All right, that's it. And I did it without sneezing. See you later.